welcome to Back to Basics with Crystal. Today we are planting some tomato and pepper seeds and I've recruited uh, Logan to help me fill up all of my, um, my plant pots. So I'm going to bring you closer and show you what we're doing. All right, y'all, so these are the seeds that we've already planted, and you can see we've got them marked. That's super important. I uh, learned that lesson last year when I didn't mark, um, mark them, and I actually thought, oh, I'll remember. Yeah, right. Um, so having them marked is really super important. And let me tell you, if you've never grown tomatoes from seeds, it could seem really intimidating, but growing them from seed is very, very, very easy. Um, I think if I can do it, just about anybody can do it. So we've got six varieties there, and I've got one more behind me, and the eighth one is actually um, an experiment from last year. I have never saved tomato seeds before, so this uh, was the ones that I saved from last year. So let's get them planted and hope that they grow. Okay, so we have all of our trays filled, and you want to make sure that the dirt is packed down. You don't want to make sh you don't want it loose. You want it packed down. So I'm just going to take um, just a small object. This happens to be a pencil, an old pencil, and you're just going to make a little hole about a quarter inch deep in each cell. That's actually where we're going to drop the seed. Now this uh, dirt that we're using is just a uh, potting mix. It's an organic potting mix and uh, you can definitely use um, a seed starting mix. Uh, whatever you've got, I had this on hand. I firmly believe in using what you have on hand. So I've got this on hand. I've made an indention in each uh, cell. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my seeds. Y'all, this couldn't be any easier. And now, a lot of people will tell you to put uh, one or two, uh, two, I'm sorry, two or three in each one. I'm just going to drop one in. Now, these are the, the seeds that I saved from last year's crop. And since I've never done it before, I didn't go and do and save a whole bunch of seeds. I just did a very small amount. This is our eighth variety of tomatoes. So if it doesn't produce, I'm okay with that. It's a live and learn and experimenting. You know, it's all about experimenting and learning as you go. And if these actually do grow, I'll share with you guys what I did. So just one in each one. And we have a few more left, so I'm going to go ahead and put two in each one just because I've got a little bit more. And this gives us a little bit more insurance that we might actually have a tomato come up. That's the reason why when they, you know, when you buy a pack of seeds, you get so many seeds. Um, so you can plant them a little bit closer, um, plant more in a cell. Okay, so all we're going to do is just make sure that it's down just a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a handful of dirt, and I'm just going to sprinkle it on. I told y'all this was easy, right? And then you just want to press down. You want a good seed to soil connection. Press it down. Don't drag, because then you'll end up dragging your seeds right on out of the cells. Ask me how I know. And that's it. So all we're going to do is label it, water, and wait for it to sprout. Uh, tomatoes typically take uh, 10 to 14 days. Okay, so I showed you guys um, the um, tomatoes, how to do the tomatoes. And now let's do some peppers. Listen, it's the same steps, no matter if you're what vegetable you're doing. Um, especially these really small seed vegetables, you wanna go about a quarter inch deep, uh, make a small indentation. You want to make sure that you've got good soil to seed um, connection. So just to kind of recap, what we did was we filled up each cell and we wanted to make sure that the cell was packed. 
not loose and then we made a hole a little indention about a quarter inch deep in each cell and now we're just going to go back with our seeds and just put one or two or three per cell. Now, if, you, if you're if you doing multiples and you do have uh, multiple plants come up, you really just have to figure out what your strongest plant is and call out the other ones. Seems kind of harsh, right? So, I, you know, I wanna encourage you guys, if you're not starting your plants by seed. I want to encourage you to at least try. At least try, you know, one group. If you're used to buying your plants at the local big box nursery, that's fine. Um, but, you know, give this a try. It's, it's really truly not as hard as it seems. And it's really neat to watch it uh, germinate and grow, you know, from, from nothing. If you are very new to gardening, um, and you're, you're unsure if you want to, um, you know, if, if you want to grow your own plants, um, for sure go to a store, go to a nursery, um, a small local nursery and, um, and, and buy plants from there. I would steer clear of the big box stores. If you go to a local nursery, um, you're going to find somebody that's got the same passion for plants as you do. You're going to find, um, you know, they're going to know what they're talking about. They're going to know all about the zone and what you should be planting in your area. This is some Thai chili peppers. And um, all in all, you're going to get a lot of knowledge. And truthfully, you're not going to spend, um, you're going to spend about the same amount of money as if you were uh, going to that big box store and uh, buying your seed from there or your plants from there. For example, like um, I overplant, so I always sell off my extras to, lo to the locals and I sell my plants. I, last year I sold my plants for $3 each, which is basically the same cost as if you were went to the big box store. Now they came out here, um, I, they got to talk to me about the different uh, plants. They're getting heirloom plants rather than just hybrids. They're getting unique plants that uh, not everybody else in their neighborhood has. So, you know, I encourage you, seek out local sources, small time nurseries, small time gardeners like myself, who just overplant and have an abundance and are willing to sell off their extras to you. So, this is my encouragement to you guys today. So we're just adding on the dirt here and packing down. And hopefully you guys can see this. Remember, we don't wanna smear like this, we wanna pack like this. Don't forget to label it. And all I'm doing is I just took a piece of wood and in my very messy marker handwriting, wrote the, um, the name of the plant. The other thing that I do is I save all of my seed packets from that year. I just keep these, um, that way I know the correct spelling. Um, there's usually some really good information on these seed packets that I mean, may need to know later on. So I make sure I save all of these and at the end of the season, I can just toss these out. Um, actually, I'll put these, since they're paper, I'll just put them in the burn pile. And then put the ashes uh, back into the garden. So. That's our seeds for today. Let's move on to the garden. Uh, let's go plant some potatoes the lazy way. Okay, so we're finally into the garden. Now, normally, when it's time to plant potatoes, you, um, you want to wait till they get eyes like this, and then you'll cut them into pieces and bury them uh, into the ground about four inches down. Um, I'm gonna plant these just like this. That's the way Ruth Stout did it. Um, all she did is just plop them onto the ground and cover it with some hay. Uh, and she swore by that. So we're actually going to try that and grow them this way. It'll be a learning experience for us all. The other thing I wanted to show you guys is I found this. Uh, you're probably wondering what in, on earth is that? These are potatoes that I meant to plant last year. I grew these actually 
two years ago. So these are the seed potatoes I grew two years ago. Um, and they have sat in my fridge in the crisper drawer. <laughs> Say hi, Logan. So they have sat in my crisper drawer um, for now two years. And so I discovered them and they have some pretty big eyes. Look at that. I've never seen Logan, can you take Nacho back in, please? <laughs> um, anyway, I've never seen eyes this big. He grabbed my potato. Stop. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Um, anyway, I've never seen eyes this big that just kind of grew in the fridge for two years. I don't know if these are going to grow. I don't know if these are going to make. But it's worth a shot, right? I mean, it's better than throwing them out or, or feeding them to the chickens. So let's hope that the chickens don't get them and uh, let's hope that they grow. So let's uh, get started planting these the lazy way. Now we've got some really good decomposed uh, hay here. It's sat all winter. And we're just going to put the hay down. Supposedly this is all there is to it. I think my shovel might start to miss me. For the small ones, 12 inches apart again. grab our hay again and we're just gonna flop it down. Now I don't remember um, in any of Ruth Stout's videos or a book if she how deep she did this. So we're just gonna do this a few inches thick right now and then we'll come back and uh, add some more later on. And I think we'll finish out probably at about 12 inches thick but that's after the plants have um, have started uh, growing green growth. Okay y'all, it's getting late and I uh, just finished the entire row. Let me flip the camera around so you guys can see. I just finished this entire row. Um, I'll measure it out how long it is and I just literally just plopped the potatoes down. Um, I don't feel like I planted anything. I feel like I just kind of threw them onto the ground and left them for dead. Um, so we'll see. We're going to learn this together. I've never tried growing potatoes the lazy way, but I do trust in the Ruth Stout method and everything that she learned. I want to kind of go on that. Now, what I do want to add is that I did add some triple 13 fertilizer. I know, gasp. Um, there will be some of you that are very surprised that I um, am not leaning more towards organic methods. Let me tell you why. Um, for two years, my garden struggled and struggled and struggled with the Back to Eden method um, before I realized that my soil was not strong enough um, to grow plants on its own. Only ever had it just been taken away, taken away. Nothing had ever been added back in up till about two and a half years ago, other than some compost, um, a little bit of compost before then, but really and truly not much. So it took me two and a half years to figure out 
that I needed to add a little bit of fertilizer if I was going to have a successful crop. Um, now I do add organic um, blood, uh, blood meal and along with a little bit of triple 13 fertilizer. Um, I don't use as much as I did when I was doing a conventional garden. Uh, I know that for a fact. So if you're just starting out with the Back to Eden um, Ruth Stout, any type of deep mulch system, just know that it's gonna take years years for your soil to build itself up for the microorganisms to build themselves up um, and and be available to grow your garden without any needs for any um, chemical fertilizers so until then don't be afraid don't be ashamed to use fertilizer otherwise you're going to be racking your brain and driving yourself crazy you can take that from me that's what I learned the first two and a half years of doing Back to Eden. Last year was about ha half a year um, Back to Eden and then I switched over to the Roost Out method, which is, hey, it's all the same method. It really and truly is. Um, you're just using you know, wood chips on one and hay on the other. Uh, and truth be told, if a chip truck was to show up right now, I tell them, come on in, come on in, you can dump right over here. So um, it's, it's all the same to me. Um, so today we had a very, very busy day. Let's see, we got some peppers and tomatoes planted. I do have some more uh, to, uh, peppers that need to be planted. Um, let's see, peppers and tomatoes. I got some artichokes planted because over the, the freeze and the snow that we had, I actually lost some artichoke uh, starts that I had in there. So I planted some more of those. And then I also planted a Chinese mustard um, that we'll make some som pak with here in a few weeks. So hopefully everything comes up. And and um, oh, and I also started uh, some sweet potato slips, <laughs> sweet potato slips. So um, very busy day. Oh, and then the final was I just threw some potatoes onto the ground that I found in the back of the fridge from two years ago. Hopefully you enjoy this video, my rambling. And if you do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give me a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share. And um, we're just going to go along this journey together. And hopefully you guys learn something from my mistakes along the way. You guys have a blessed day. Until we talk again, y'all be good. Bye.